Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 114 of the Debt Free Dad podcast. Today, we're going to be revealing the number one cause of a financial failure. And honestly, any type of failure, meaning like this is the silent killer for really any type of goal that you're trying to reach, especially when it comes to getting out of debt and taking control of their finances. You're going to find out what this silent killer is on today's show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now, here's your host, Debt Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Debt Free Dad. And uh, of course, welcome to today's show. So glad that you guys are joining us. And again, to get all the resources, show notes, and links from today's show, head over to balancedsense.com forward slash 114. That's B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-C-E-N-T-S dot com forward slash 114. Uh, so guys, um, I am in, I didn't even tell, well, Amber, you know I'm doing this, but... Uh, Today is day 15 of a challenge I'm doing. It's a it's a gut reset slash cleanse challenge. And uh, I got to tell you, my house has been intense the last 15 <laughs> days. <laughs> Me and my wife, I think, have like, okay, so seriously, like this is an intense challenge. And it, this kind of goes with today's show and what I'm a little worried about. But um, like, this is all like strictly like, have you ever heard of like Whole30 and you know, like really strict, like cleaning your system out, like no dairy, uh, no like processed foods whatsoever. Uh, the first two weeks, you couldn't have any red meat of any kind, um, no rice, no pasta, no, like it was like vegetables and like simple meats like pork, fish, chicken, and, you know, again, no process, it's like the realest food, like you got to eat real food for these whole two weeks. And, uh, I gotta say the, the, the cleanse part was last week and I was miserable. <laughs> I was absolutely miserable. And I've never done a cleanse before. And let me tell you, it, it when they say cleanse, it really is a cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta tell you, man, last week was, I, if I had to go any longer, Monday was my last day. And, and I, if I had to go any longer than Monday, I would have just thrown in the towel because I was just like, I can't do it anymore. I was so physically and mentally drained, <laughs> but crazy enough, Tuesday, day 15 comes around and you start taking this probiotic. And I was like, Superman today, man. I had my best workout that I've had in forever. Like I was like, this is amazing. So I feel really, really good. Uh, in fact, today I put on a shirt and this is crazy guys. It's amazing how fast your body can heal itself. When you stop giving it the crap that you have been given and you start giving it the right stuff. Literally two weeks ago, I couldn't even button a button up shirt that I, and it's not the one I'm wearing right now, by the way, <laughs> but I couldn't even button it up because I had gotten so out of shape Two weeks later, I can literally button it up and comfortably, not button it up where the buttons are still separated, you know, <laughs> but literally button it up and it's comfortable. I'm like, that is amazing in just two weeks that your body can transform that fast doing those things that intensely. I'm impressed. Now, I still have a week to go and I'm, you know, I'm totally going to make it because this is getting to the easy part now. Um, but my concern is what we're going to talk about on today's show is with all of these things is is consistency, right? <laughs> That's what I'm concerned about because for me, like when it comes to weight loss, like even getting out of debt and doing this stuff, and, and a lot of people know, like we all know a lot of the things that we should be doing. Like when we talk about your money and your finances or we talk about getting healthy, like we know we probably should get some regular exercise every day. We probably know we shouldn't eat all the processed food and all the fatty foods or any of that. We, we, we know all of those things, right? Um, when it comes to... So, so the, the three tacos and the five <laughs> cookies I ate right before this are not good. <laughs> is what we're saying. I just want to be clear because I know I shouldn't be doing that, but I keep doing that. Right. That's the, that's the thing. And, and I'm, I'm not saying it. I'm saying as, as people, we know the things that we should and shouldn't be doing. And the same thing comes, comes to our finances. Like, 
we know that we probably should save more money and, and probably have some, even if you don't call it a budget, let's call it a cash flow plan or a, whatever you want to call it. Like we know we should have some sort of a plan for our finances. We know we should probably be saving more and at least building some sort of a saving. Like we all know some of these basic concepts, but why don't we do that? And it's because the number one reason for failure of anything that you do, it isn't a lack of knowledge because we live in the world of information. Like literally on the few taps of your phone, you can get billions of results now for certain things that you're looking for. It has nothing to do with information. It really kind of comes down to a lack of consistency and doing the things over and over again every single day to get the results that you want to see. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things here in the United States, and and we'll throw Canada in there too, or any modern day civilization, is that everything is so right now. We just lack commitment, right? We just lack long-term commitment in getting the results because, again, we are taught to have everything now. You want something, you want food delivered, you don't even have to go get it anymore. You just tap an app on your phone and they just deliver it right to your house. You look at Amazon, like it used to be two day and for a lot of it, it still is, but you can still get stuff next day or now you can get stuff the same day delivered right to your house. That's crazy. Um, you know, when we wanted to listen to music when we were kids, and I, Ryan, I remember us doing this when we were kids, we had to wait till the song came on the radio to hit the record button <laughs> on the tape deck, right? That's what we had to do. Today, you don't have to do any of that. You can literally go right on the music app and you can tap the music that you want and it's instantaneous. And this is why I think so many people struggle with achieving long-term results and achieving long-term success is because society is really working against us. And uh, you know what, what tends to happen is we all are really good at getting started but what we're all really bad at is sticking with it. And a lot of people say, Brad, why, why did you start a company like, or a, or a program like Roots? This is it. This is the only reason. Because a lot of people know what they should do. It's just a lot of people don't have it in them to do it long enough to get long-term results like we've talked about on this show. The number one cause of financial fa- failure is going to be your lack of consistency. Um, and, and I think a part of that too is because of the boring, mundane stuff that we have to go through on a regular basis to get the results. Like for instance, we're going to talk about finances here, but things like budgeting, things like saving, things like saying no, uh, and, and feeling temporary pain. A lot of these things aren't that exciting. Nobody really wants to do this, including myself. Some people are pretty shocked to find out, like I don't get terribly excited to sit down every month and go over my budget. Like it's, it's not, it's not nearly, it's not that exciting. It's probably just as exciting for me as it is for you. But I do it because I like the results, right? The results are what make it fun. But for some reason, a lot of people have felt like, oh, well, you know, this isn't fun, so I'm just not going to do it. Well, in order to be successful, you have to be willing to do a lot of the not fun stuff in order to actually get to that level of success where you can begin to have fun, right? And that's where you got to put in the work. This is like the same thing. Again, I use weight loss and, and getting healthy in the same lines because I think they, they run parallel in the behaviors and the habits. You know, if you, if you want to have that physique and, or if you just want to live a healthy lifestyle, like you've got to put in the work. Like everyone's looking for this like 30 to 60 or 90 day like magical pill, but it comes after months and months and years and years of practice to consistently keep doing it in order to maintain those levels of success when it comes to managing your health. And the same thing kind of goes with your finances. Um, you know, a lot of people are really great at starting something, but very few are really, are really willing to finish. I mean, you guys think about this. How many times, and myself included, I mean, how many times did you join a gym with the best of intentions? Like, this is going to be it. Like, you look at the new year, right? The new year is when a lot of people say, I'm going to get recommitted to either their finances or whatever it might be, Right. And everyone's good at showing up. I mean, look at the gym in the first couple of weeks at the gym. It's packed in January. But then like week three, week four of the month, it's back to what it was, right? It's not that those people don't know how to get in their car and get to the gym and use the equipment. It's just they lack the commitment and actually going to the gym and doing the work. Same thing with eating healthy. People lack the commitment of meal planning and they lack the commitment of actually shopping for the right foods. Instead, they result to easier, faster meal prep things, which end up costing them because of the ingredients that are inside or they go out takeout, right? And it ruins the plan. And before you know it, people just quit, right? I mean, how many times have you guys done that? 
You know how many times I've quit things? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but no, when it comes to like exercise and stuff like that, I've wasted so much money on gym memberships. Right. So and much. It, right. And I think, again, it's, would you admit though, it's not that you didn't know what to do. It's just you lacked commitment to it. Oh, absolutely. I was committed for the first week or so. And then my ass, something better came up. <laughs> I got, I got invited to something else. It's the same with the finances. I, I tried to pay my debt before. Oh, but everybody was going out for dinner that night. Yeah. It just something better always came up and it just never happened fast right. enough to make it feel worthwhile. And a lot of times when you look at that, you know, kind of look at that analogy of working out. Cause I'm in the same boat. I I've done it a lot. And you know, I think the story you'll hear from a lot of people, especially when it comes to their health is it never mattered until it mattered when they went to the doctor. Yeah. And now it mattered. Right. And it's the same thing with your finances, like buying that cool thing, buying the boat, having fun, doing all this stuff. It's all great until it's not. And then it's like, Oh crap, what do we do? Right. You know? And I think that that, that is, I think where, um, that's why we lack, consistency. And I know it's why I lack consistency. Cause guess what? We made it another month. We had $18 in there, but we did it. <laughs> and so we can just keep doing, we can keep towing that line, you know, because we just keep making it until you don't make it or until it's really get serious until you break a leg and you got to be out of work for a week. And then it's suddenly like, Holy cow, we've got a real problem on our hands. Um, I think that that's where I think consistent's easy to not be consistent when there, when there's not really any repercussions in a way, like there's no serious, like I'm not losing my house. I'm not losing my car. Everything's, I can just pretend it's okay. You know, but the day they come to take my car now, now I want to get consistent. Yeah. Now I want, now I want help, you know, or now I will really got to, got to work out because I'm having heart problems or whatever it might be. Right. So uh, let me ask you guys a question. And this is just a general question. Thinking back, and I know I'm kind of just throwing that this at you. So we're just going to see how this goes. But thinking back, what have you guys, what do you guys do consistently every day? What's one thing you do consistently every day? And you can't use oh, that's like the question. Uh, that's it. I brush my teeth. Yeah. Like what is something, what's, what do you do? What do you do consistently every day? That's, that's good for you. That, and you can't use like, I brush my teeth. That's an easy one. I drink a ton of water. And you do that consistently every day? Yeah, I just always have water on my desk. That's if good. I don't put it on my desk, I won't drink it. But if I always have it, I'll drink it. Lots of it. Now, did you always do that? Or was there a point where you started that? No, there's tons of time. There's lots of days where I didn't drink any water. So I, I just made it a point to start doing it. And now I can't stop. So how did you change that habit? I, I just made sure it was in front of me all the time because then I'm going to grab it. Right. And now I just, my body just wants it. So now you're just, okay. So you're not using like any sort of tracker or anything like that. You just, Oh no, no. It's just, you just regularly made a habit to start drinking water. Mm -hmm. And how many years have you been doing that? Uh, maybe two, not that long. Okay. Ryan, how and, about you? And sometimes I'll fall off of that too. <laughs> right. So you have drift, right? Yeah, yeah. So you'll drift off a little bit. Right. See, that's the thing too. I, I struggle with that too, is having drift. It's like, you know, one day, and that we hear this with people with budgets. I mean, Amber, you're, you're, you're in roots and, and you hear about it. And it's like, uh, you know, I didn't do my budget last month. And all of a sudden one month turned into two months, and two months turned into three months. Right. So I think, I think all of us need to kind of figure that out though. Like what, what is going to be those keys to consistency? I mean, obviously I know one of them is a, is a big one is accountability having an accountability partner, having an accountability team, having someone hold you accountable. Like those are some really ways to stay consistent. But uh, Ryan, what about you? What have you done consistently every day? Eat cookies. <laughs> that's, he said that's good for you, Ryan. Well, it is well maybe, good for me. maybe it is good for me. It makes me happy. Um, no, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say, well, it's the same as Amber, but I was a hundred percent. I was my whole life. Soda drinker it's pretty much all I drank. Um, and so, I mean, I made that switch. I think consistent. One of the consistent things that we've, that, you know, my wife and I've done is, uh, and I can't say it's every day, but it's, it's almost every day is we consistently just go and take time and go take the dog for a walk. And we go either to the park in the winter. Sometimes it's neighborhood because the park closes early, but for the most part, we get out and just consistently do that because it's good for it's good for us. It's good for our mental health. We used to not do that as much. It was a lot of just, you know, not to say we sit around a lot, but just not making the time to, to do that or kind of the, Oh, well, it's cold or, Oh, well, it's this. It's like, 
let's just do it. And usually after we do it, we feel better yeah. and that we're glad we did it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, from, if I had to pick one, I would say the, from a physical standpoint, I, I consistently started working out when I started this business, I said, I'm going to make a commitment to working out. And I've done that consistently for six years, um, four to five times a week. Now in the summer months, I change out what workout means. Cause like you guys do, uh, Sarah and I like to walk a lot and I, prefer walking outside and being outdoors when Wisconsin, you know, you're inside all the time in the winter time. So I might skip out like my traditional workout to go get other forms of exercise or do things like that. But that is something that I've consistently always have done. Um, but for some reason, and the reason I asked this is just, I guess finding out like, what is the secret to making that thing consistent? You know, like, well, like I mentioned, I'm doing this challenge right now. And it's like, my worry is that I'm going to get through this because I know motivation doesn't last. There's going to be days that I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to feel like it. Right. Uh, you know, eating healthy can become right now. We're only two weeks in like, this is fun. This is exciting. Right. But four weeks in six weeks in eight weeks in three weeks, three months in, it's like, this gets really boring and mundane. This isn't going to be fun anymore. Same thing when it comes to your finances, right? A lot of people who join roots or a lot of people get started after a life without payments workshop, or you might be on this, this podcast listening to this at first, you might find that this is really exciting to do. It's fun. Like, this is new. We're getting results. This is exciting. But sooner or later, that funness kind of wears off. This is why we talk about why power, right? Like, why do you really want to do this work? Because eventually that motivation is not going to last and you really need to have something that you're going to, that's going to help you stick with it. Um, and that's my biggest concern. That's why I was asking you guys, like what you guys have done consistently and what's, what's helped you stay consistent? Because I, I truly feel like coaching people and helping people, that is the number one thing of failure that I see inside our program with people who are financially struggling in my own life is it isn't that we don't know what to do. It's just, we have a hard time staying with it and sticking with it and not experiencing that drift. So we're going to come back. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, the thing, you know, you kind of talk, you know, it's, it's boring, it's mundane, you know, saying no, all this stuff. We, for us, it was about looking at each other and saying, going to, going to Disney was fun. Is it fun the other 370 or 350 days we're at home fighting about money and arguing about how we don't have money in the checking account and who spent $20 over here? Um, Cause that, that wasn't fun for us. That's what really allowed us to stay consistent because I think we get trapped in this. Well, I can't have any fun, but what you're doing is you're trading those very small moments of fun for months and pretty much the rest of the year. It's like people always say, and I, I've used this example before, you've never seen a, an unhappy person on a boat. And I'm like, yeah, when they're on the boat, they're really happy. But when they're at home and they're not on the boat 95% of the time, and they have a $700 a month payment and they're making all these payments and they can't make it and they're stressed out, that doesn't sound like fun, yeah. you know? And for, right. so for us, that's what kept us motivated is we were trading that little burst of fun that day of going and spending $500 on something fun. That's going to make me, make me happy for a week for a lifetime of like fun. Right. Right. Well, I think one of the things that's helped me stay consistent is number one is I go into it knowing like if there's something I really want to do and achieve, I understand that at some point I'm going to hit that wall where it's going to be like, I'm going to wake up one day. I'm not going to be like, I don't really want to do this. I don't feel like doing this because that boringness and that mundaneness has arrived, right? And we have to understand that whatever goal that you want to reach, not every day is going to be a Disneyland type of day. <laughs> it's just right. not going to happen, right? Um, like for instance, well, look at this. Like I got out of debt. Like, well, we can always use that example, but look at look at the podcast here, all right? We're on, what is what episode are we on? Is this 114? We're on 114. Like this podcast is a lot of fun when we record it and do this, but I got to tell you guys, like putting the podcast together and writing all the shows and stuff, that's fun up to a point. And then it turns into a job. It turns into some of it is boring. Some of it's mundane. It's the, oh, I got to do this again, right? But I love being able to come on here and talk with Ryan and Amber and being also to be able to talk to everybody that's listening to this and get all the amazing feedback from people who are doing this. That's the fun part. I am willing to push through the not fun parts of doing this show in order to reach the fun parts of doing this show. And I think that's the part that we've got to get comfortable with in order to maintain consistency, especially when it comes to our finances, is understand that there's going to be days when you're going to wake up and you're not going to want to do your budget. There's going to be days where you're going to wake up and you're not going to, you're going to want to overspend. There's going to be days when you wake up and you're not going to give a rip, right? Expect that. Expect that it's going to happen and have a plan just to say, we're going to do it 
anyways. Do the thing, do the work, and you're going to get the results. All right. The other thing too is like we mentioned is, uh, you know, getting, getting this Y power back. And I think a, a key to getting your Y power back and, and keeping it consistent is really setting up good routines. Like uh, for me working out, like I work out consistently. Now COVID did throw a wrench into this because my son ended up going virtual when all COVID hit back in 2020. And man, did that throw off my routine. It took me a while to get back into it, but I consistently work out every day between eight and nine o'clock in the morning, every day, Monday through Friday. Like that's just the time. So as soon as I like, I've like Amber, you said, well, the water is just in front of me. I just drink it. Like it just, just become a habitual habit. And I only created that because I just consistently did that every day until I realized as soon as it hits between eight and nine o'clock, it's like, okay, I gotta go work out. Right. And the same thing kind of comes with your finances too. Like you got to understand when it's getting to the end of the month, you get to so much of a habit of it. I got to have my next month's budget ready. Right. You have to create these different routines. We have the five daily financial to-dos that we talk about. This is taught inside our Life Without Payments workshop. If you're interested in what those are, go to our website. You can download the free workshop. But the five daily financial to-dos is all about creating routine and habit on a daily basis of working on your finances and doing just some of these basic practices day in and day out, right? The other thing too is eventually you just got to get to the point where you're ready to just cut out the excuses. You know, the biggest one that we hear is, uh, I just don't have time right? I just don't have time to work on my finances. I don't have time to do the stuff that you guys are talking about on this show. Um, you definitely have to cut out things that are wasting your time or the excuses that are keeping you stuck. And this is a big part of what we do in Roots Personal Finance because excuses play a big part in why people continue to be broke and why can people continue to struggle. It isn't because of a lack of income or the amount of debt that they have. We can, we can work through all those things. It's you got to bust through these excuses that are keeping you stuck and in the position that you're in right now. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, this is, I mean, I was the king of excuses, you know, and we're talking about working out. I still am the king of excuses when it comes to some of this stuff. <laughs> um, but I think one of the, one of the things, and I think it's just human nature. I, I think I, I'm, I've been guilty of this, especially when it came to finances um, is, you know, kind of this, yeah, but excuse, you know, this, this, this idea you know, every, anytime you see somebody doing something that is pushes beyond like what you think is possible. It's just, I think, I think it's a natural human reaction to kind of have this, well, I mean, they're having success, but it's really because, you know, they had this leg up that you don't, or they had this job that you didn't get, or they had this income that you didn't get or, or anything or working out. I'm a hundred percent guilty of this. I see people on TV. Um, I follow people on Instagram, sometimes some celebrities and I see them, you know, they're all working out and they're healthy and they're doing these workouts and oh, oh and I'm like, yeah, but they have a million dollars and they, they have, they have chefs that cook for them and they have people that train them. And it's like, I mean, I'll fall on my sword here a little bit. I mean, it's just my way of saying <laughs> uh, I could do that too, but that's, I don't want to, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think people are, I think you can get trapped in this. And I think if, instead of like having that view is just, how do you look at that and say, instead of, yeah, but like, what, what can I do? You know, yeah. what, is there anything I can do? Because if you're just always looking at it with that, through that lens, yep. you've kind of already put up the front of it's not possible for me and I'm going to find a reason why it won't work. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think that, that is for a lot of, and I've actually, I actually just removed somebody from our group because of that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, because everything that we posted was negative. Well, what are their expenses? And, 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 like what, give me the details on what, how they were able to have such great success. And I'm like, well, if you listen to the podcast, they gave all the details on the actions that they were taking to get this success, what their expenses are and what their income was makes no difference. The thing is, is if you do the stuff that these people are talking about on this podcast, the people that we bring on these, these, these members, these people that are putting this work in, like do the stuff that they're doing and you're not necessarily going to get the same numbers or the same exact debt payoffs or the same savings numbers, but I guarantee you just doing the stuff that they talk about on the show, you're going to get started getting those results, right? But yes, we get so hooked on, well, I can never do that, so I'm not going to bother, right? And so yeah, those are definitely excuses that can keep you stuck. But again, I wanted to bring this up because I think a lot of people tend to you know, say, oh, it's their income that they can't continuously get, you know, results or it's the amount of debt that they have or whatever other excuse that they come up with. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the thing that really leads to financial failure is just a lack of consistency. Uh, if you've been listening to this podcast for some time, you know what you should be doing. 
It's just answering the question of how can we become more consistent and do it day in, day out, month in, month out, month in, month out, and year in, year out. Because once you get to that point, then it's all fun, right? Because then you start to get the results. And that's what you have to master in your own life. And again, that's why we exist. That's why Roots exist. It's all about the accountability. And I think accountability is one of the number one things that holds most people more accountable and consistent to their financial goals and helping them uh, reduce financial stress and, and living a happier life. So I uh, hope that helped you guys here today. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a break and do a quick commercial. We'll be back with here uh, some celebration. Stay tuned. Hey, if you love planners, this is for you. But do you know why planners frustrate me? Because they only really get it half right. Now, sure, they're really good and fancy about helping you manage your time, which is really important, obviously. That's what a planner's for. But where they get it wrong is money, the second most valuable resource in our lives. Most planners don't include any financial planning, things like you know, keeping track of paydays, bills, due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, and goal planning, right? None of that stuff. That's a real pain. And then what? Then you got to create your own and some silly binder, right? And who has time for all of that stuff? So instead, what happens? Nothing, right? A lot of people tend to ignore their finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends today because I am so excited to announce and release my brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. This thing's awesome, by the way. Now, before you say, Brad, I've already got a planner. This is not an ordinary day planner. This is the Debt Freedom Planner, which is a companion tool that works with your day planner, and it's built to help you manage your money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. And, and I believe this is the tool that a lot of people who want to take control of their finances have been waiting for. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu to get access to your planner today. Hey, hey, what's this I see? I thought this was a party! All right, all right. That song means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And today we are kicking it off with Sierra Wall. Sierra says, my win for the week was last night. Actually, there was a glitch on an online store website. and It was giving $300 off a $400 purchase. I had my credit or my cart full of much needed bras and jeans, but my total was still over $130. And listen to this, guys. I chose to still say no. Sierra, that is such a huge win. Congratulations to you. That's awesome. Hi, Sandy Kurtz, Jarrett. I was having a tough January. This week I got paid and budgeted my money as I do every paycheck. I did not use my credit cards at all this week. Getting back on track. Awesome. Great win, Sandy. Uh, Cindy Berman, I called the credit card company, asked for a new card because I cut up my old one. Three minutes later, I called back and canceled. Not sure how I'm going to pay for what I need to, but I will find a way. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah, called back, canceled it. Oh, that's a good win, and and I know she's working through that, but um, way to stick to, your, stick to your guns on that one. That was an awesome win, Cindy. Uh, Cindy Kirkpatrick, Hannah, we had a conversation about money. This is between her and her spouse. Not a fight, not a one-sided conversation, but a real chat. She says, this is huge. And that is a huge, huge win for you, Sandy or Cindy. Congratulations. That's awesome. Kelly Tyson, I signed up for Roots, ordered my stickers for my planner and started thinking about my behaviors. I also discovered that being better organized and accountable has affected me in other ways, including my diet. Yes, I've started reading labels. Baby steps. Yeah, that's awesome, Kelly. And that's talking about the ripple effect. You know, uh, when you start working on your finances, it's amazing how much of a different effect it's going to have on all the other areas of your life. And Kelly's celebration is a perfect example of that. So great win. Uh, Patrice Johnson, I closed my Platinum American Express card eight days before getting hit with the $550 annual fee. Woo, that's a big fee. I had zero balance and had not used it in three years, but I couldn't let it go because of what I thought it meant to have one. Now I see that's just a bunch of BS and I'd rather have the $550. <laughs> Although I'm mad that it took me decades to figure it out. I'm feeling super proud that I finally did. Hey, it's taken hundred percent. I'm in the same boat. Took me decades to figure it out too, but we figured it out and that's the important part. Yeah. What a great win. But again, this kind of goes into that, 
that marketing man of of belonging right you have this special elite credit card and uh you know it makes you feel like you're somebody when you've got it it's all marketing it's just a piece of plastic right it's all it is at the end of the day so great win for you patrice to recognize what it truly is uh such a fantastic win so congratulations all of you guys who are working so hard and remember to get all the resources and show notes and links for today's show head over to balancesense.com forward slash 114 that's again, B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-C-E-N-T-S dot com forward slash 114. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback and it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback on this video. And if you want the latest from the show, obviously be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And for the latest resources or if you want more information on how to kick debt and financial stress, please be sure to check out the links in this video or head over to the real debtfreedad.com. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show. Take care.